The world will never recover, and I'll explain why. Take a look at where life itself started. Over 13 billion years ago, the universe blew up into existence. Stars started to form around 400 million years after that. Life started on our planet at least 3.5 billion years ago, but Earth itself is even older, at 4.5 billion years old. These are all ridiculously large numbers, but bear with me here. Humans first evolved around 5 to 6 million years ago. That's a long time ago. In that time, we've seen many different things happen. They discovered fire, religion, construction, but more importantly to this video, they discovered currency and trade. This is central to why the world will never recover. Let's take a look at what's happening with climate change. It's a thing, despite people somehow trying to prove it isn't. Weather is getting worse every year. Records for the biggest storms, the longest drought and the highest temperatures are being beaten year on year. And at such a rate, it's hard to believe all this is happening in just 100 years of human evolution. Our brilliant and beautiful planet, which has been around for four and a half billion years, is being destroyed in just a single span of a human life. So why will we never recover? Why, in my opinion, will we never recover? Very simply put, greed. Humans are programmed to want, 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 and we are in a position on Earth to take what we want. Oil and gas being ripped from the planet to power our cars, planes and homes, appliances and electronics. All of these pumping more carbon emissions into the atmosphere. The laptop I'm writing this on, the phone in your hand, the TV you watch, all uses power that the vast majority of it is produced by those power stations that pump out those emissions. Just the other day I was forced into a slight squint with an extremely annoyed look on my face to see children bunking off school to attend a march on climate change. Admirable, obviously. However, in their hand I'm seeing mobile phones, some sat around on tablets, brand new trainers they're wearing, and some saying that the parents support them fully, and of course they drop them off in their cars at the march. I'm sniffing double standards, or the fact they simply don't understand what they are marching for they are also more than contributing to. But it isn't all doom and gloom. The UK and the EU as a whole have drastically cut our emissions and we've actually seen us decrease our overall emissions rather than increase. The rest of the world unfortunately hasn't followed the lead. The US has seen an increase, India has seen a massive percentage increase and China, well, they're out of control. The thing is, and the centre point of what this video is about, is that these countries will not stop and take control of their emissions. They've seen their economy boosted by using technologies that unfortunately also see an increase in emissions. Why would they stop the money flowing into their pockets to cut emissions? After all, they won't be around when the earth is inhospitable, so why would they care about what they leave behind? As long as that lovely sweet money still comes flying into their pockets, forget everything else. And it shows in their increased use of technologies that increase these emissions. They simply and, and simply won't curb it. The world is screwed because of this never-ending cycle. Kudos to the UK and the EU for forcing emissions cuts and showing the world how it's done. But without everybody on board, it's simply never going to work. The sad thing is that the answer is staring everyone right in the face, but it's simply not possible to do. Money is causing all of our issues. We can fix emissions very simply. Ban all cars off the road, other than public transport, ban overseas holidays and cut the amount of planes spewing out pollution into the atmosphere. A US study showed that a massive 28% of all of their carbon emissions are from transport and a further 28% is electricity and the burning of fossil fuels to create it, so it's reasonable to assume that other developed countries would be similar. If the UK and the EU have managed to decrease their total emissions just by normal means, then imagine what such an action as taking all cars off the road and planes out of the sky, what it would do for the world. But, alas, this will never happen. Economies would cripple. This would cause social and economic collapse. And in my opinion, this is why people will choose instead to kill the world. If it's a choice between civilization or the world, humans are just too greedy to choose such an existence over saving the planet. At some point in the future, 
I fully believe humans will be forced into such a decision and we will be found wanting. Instead of choosing to save the planet rather than ourselves, they will choose to save themselves. And that will be the death of planet Earth and then, ultimately, ourselves. 13 billion years of universe. Four and a half billion years of planetary evolution, of incredibly specific events that allowed our existence to flourish, to be wiped out in just a hundred years of human greed. And it's sad, really.